The first scene introduces a woman named Joy who works as an airline booking agent and lives in Poconic, New York. She enjoys creating new things as a hobby. During her high school year she invented the quick-release dog collar which ensured that a dog would never choke. However, she was unable to obtain a patent and a large conglomerate stole the idea from her. Joy appears to be struggling financially and has a very complicated family life. She lives with her two children her single mother, Terry, who spends her entire day in bed watching soap operas, her grandmother Mimi and her unemployed ex-husband Tony. Tony, who lives in Joy's basement aspires to be a singer. Joy also has an overachieving paternal half-sister, Peggy who regularly visits her and makes fun of her at every given chance Joy has to look after everything on her own and as a result she appears to be struggling to balance her work life and personal life. Her life is further complicated when her father, Rudy moves into her place after his third divorce. With no rooms left in the house Joy decides to keep her father in the basement with Tony but the two men don't seem to get along. Rudy owns a metal business in Joy time and again assists her father with his accounting duties. Joy also has a best friend named Jackie who always encourages her and supports her. One day Jackie pays a visit to her and the two friends talk about their lives during their conversation they are reminded of the night when everything began. The film then flashes back to a time when Jackie is hosting a party at her place. At the party, Joy meets Tony who puts a spring in her step just when she needs it. Eventually, they begin to enjoy each other's company. Tony also gets her to perform in a musical which she would have never done if not for him. Soon, the couple gets married and they start living happily. But a few years later as they have children their lives start to become more complicated. The misunderstandings begin the fighting would never stop and as a result they get divorced. Back in the present we see Rudy dating a wealthy woman named Pamela. One day, Rudy's family meets Pamela on her expensive boat and they all start having fun. Later, while drinking the boat rocks violently causing them to lose their balance. As a result, all of their drinks are spilled on the boat. Joy has to clean it up and while doing so she cuts her hand with a piece of broken glass. Later at home, Terry, as usual clogs the sink with her hair causing the pipe to become jammed. Joy then hires a plumber named Thuison to repair the pipes. Surprisingly, Terry freaks out as she hasn't had a man in her room in eight years. However, Joy manages to persuade her mother to accept a compromise. The next morning Joy asks Tony to move out of her house because they've been divorced for two years now. After this, she asks Rudy to set up a meeting with Pamela in order to discuss her new idea. Rudy obliges and he sets up a meeting in his own office later. Joy presents her new idea of a standard mop handle in front of Pamela. Using a sketch she explains her newly designed mop which can be operated with much less effort. Initially, Pamela does not understand the concept so Joy presents her with a demo. She then invites Pamela to invest in the design declaring that it has a lot of potential. Pamela thinks long and hard and she even asks Joy a series of questions. When the latter answers all of them with confidence Pamela makes up her mind and agrees to invest in the idea. Following this, Joy starts making the product in her father's office. She also contacts a company from California to produce the mop parts at a low price. In order to avoid a potential patent lawsuit the company advises Joy to pay $50,000 in royalties to a man in Hong Kong who supposedly sells a similar product. Joy, who is short on cash is hesitant to pay it but she has no other choice. Meanwhile, her manufacturer Gerhardt repeatedly bills her to remake their faulty parts making Joy enraged. After months of hard work Joy finally rolls out the final product. She then visits several shopkeepers and representatives from large corporations hoping that they will buy her product. But sadly, all of them reject. Desperate, she even stands outside a supermarket to promote her product to passers-by. But her efforts are all in vain. Upon returning home she discovers that her phone isn't working because she is late paying the bills. Mimi also informs Joy that her son Tommy has a fever which only adds to her anxiety. The same night Tony pays Joy a visit and tells her about Neil Walker who works with the large retailer company QVC. He says that the guy knows a new way of doing business and suggests she give it a shot. Watching the two Mimi believes that Tony and Joy are the best divorce couple in America because they appear to be much better friends than they were husband and wife. The following day Joy meets Neil Walker and gives him a product demonstration. Luckily, Neil is impressed by her product and asks that she prepare 50,000 units of mops by next week so that he can sell those mops on television. He then introduces her to his number one seller Todd, who will be presenting her product on TV. Following this, Neil leads her to a circular stage that has several different sets that rotate based on what they are selling at the time. He also shows her a current ongoing advertisement and explains how quickly they get calls from customers which is increasing their sales. 
This impresses Joy and she agrees to produce 50,000 mop units. Later, she visits Pamela and asks her for an additional $200,000 to make the 50,000 units but the latter declines because Joy already owes her $18,000 for the mop she hasn't sold yet. Upon requesting more Pamela tells her to put up half the money and share the financial risk as well. Left with no options Joy decides to take out a second mortgage on her home. In the following scene we see Joy and her family sitting in front of the television eager to see her product's advertisement. Unfortunately, the TV commercial failed because the celebrity pitchman was unable to demonstrate the product properly. After witnessing this, Joy is broken. In addition, Rudy and her family members pressure her to declare bankruptcy because she has mortgaged her children's future and has lost. Shortly after, Joy receives a phone call from Neil informing her that her products didn't sell well. When Joy accuses the man of improperly demonstrating her product Neil claims the problem was with the product, not the man. Devastated, she informs him of her massive debt and requests a second chance but Neil declines. The next day, Joy goes to the QVC office and heads straight to Neil interrupting an ongoing meeting. She demands a second chance, and this time she decides to do the pitch herself. Initially, Neil refuses saying that only celebrities or spokesmodels do the selling but Joy claims that she was the one who convinced him that it was a fantastic product. Hearing this, Neil decides to give her another chance and soon the preparation for the ad begins. Neil advises Joy to put on makeup and dress like a model but she chooses to retain her original identity. Soon after, the shoot begins but Joy appears nervous and freezes on stage. Jackie, who sees this on television decides to make a friendly call allowing Joy to gather up her courage. The plan works and Joy overcomes her nervousness. She then begins to present her mop in the best possible way resulting in customer calls and sales. After witnessing this Neil believes that Joy will be a whole new business. Following this shoot Joy is taken aback by the number of sales that occur. She then approaches Neil who invites her to be friends in commerce. Later Joy shares the good news with her family and they celebrate her success with the party. However, Joy's happiness doesn't last long as her grandmother Mimi passes away. After the funeral Rudy informs his daughter that Gerhard has raised the price per unit on the mop parts. He also mentions that since Joy was upset about Mimi's death he instead sent Peggy to speak with Gerhard on her behalf. Unfortunately, Peggy makes an awful deal and she pays Gerhard's excessive overcharges without Joy's permission. This jeopardizes Joy's business even more. In the next scene Joy travels to California to discuss the price with Gerhard. However, the cunning man refuses to refund the money or lower the price of the mop parts. He claims that the raw materials she requires are too expensive for them to produce. Hearing this, Joy demands to see the manufacturing process but he refuses. As a result, Joy pretends to use the restroom and proceeds towards the production department where she discovers that her own designs and molds have been stolen. She learns that the contract documents she signed contain several loopholes that allowed them to fraudulently patent Joy's mop designs as their own. Upon returning back home Joy's lawyer claims that when she paid the royalties it placed all of her parts and molds under the umbrella of their patent. Joy responds that she paid the royalty just because Pamela and her lawyer instructed her to do so. Hearing this, Pamela says that her lawyer was mistaken because he is not a patent attorney. Furthermore, Joy's lawyer informs her that when Peggy paid the unjustified bills it closed the door on them. Now, Joy is unable to go to QVC fearing that she will be sued for delivering a fully patented product. With everything going wrong Judy and Pamela put pressure on her to declare bankruptcy and vacate her home because she is deeply in debt. This time, she has no choice but to sign the papers. Shortly after declaring bankruptcy Joy discovers that there was never a similar product in Hong Kong and that the manufacturer had defrauded her. The very next day Joy flies to Texas in order to confront Derek Markham the owner to whom she had paid advance royalties. She accuses Derek of fraud and embezzlement. She also claims to have discovered the paperwork stating that her mop bears no resemblance to his patent so she never owed any royalties for his patent which is another case of fraud. When Derek learns of this he agrees to repay double the amount of her royalties plus interest in full. Joy also demands that he return all of her molds and has him sign a document stating that he has no rights financially. The movie then cuts to a few years later where Joy has become a successful independent businesswoman who sponsors other investors. Jackie and Tony are her steadfast confidants. Joy also sponsors Rudy, Pamela, and Peggy's products. Despite the fact that they wrongly sued for ownership of her company Joy continues to take care of and love Rudy as he grows older. As Neil predicted she did become a whole new baby and even outgrew QVC. Neil and Joy are adversaries in commerce but they remain personal friends. Terry appears to be self-sufficient having a stable relationship with Tuisant. 
Finally, Joy lives a happy and prosperous life. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.